All right. Um, I, I, as many of you on Twitch at least know, but probably none of you on YouTube know, I am starting to look at Ashes of Creation because um, I'm not entirely convinced that Star Citizen is really making um, the type of game that is like my forever game anymore. And I started watching some videos and I actually kind of pre-watched this one. And we started talking about something on Twitch. And this one is titled Ashes of Creation, the Savior of MMOs, or is it? And the um the presenter of the video or you know the channel, NARC decided to make a comparison to Star Citizen. And I don't think it was an entirely a fair comparison, but um, we'll, we'll get into it and, and talk about why. But yeah, it's um, also an entirely fair comparison. So, uh, and, and he shows the differences between the two games. And it was, sadly, it was really eye-opening to um, just how frustrating Star Citizen is to uh, to follow. So here we go. Narc was often in his underwear. So prepare. Yep, he's in his underwear is again. Underway. Perfect. Follow me and prepare the crew for jettison for when we reach the center of the multiverse. We have all crew members equipped with high-grade hopium inhalers, spare hopium tanks, and wielding the latest models of hopium injectors. Good. Now I want yourself and the rest of the research team to monitor the clones as they recruit for our cause. It's vital that we is free that these players Sharif from their on his prison. underwear. That is their dog shit MMORPGs. Yes, I looked at his PP. <laughs> but what about you, sir? Huh? Me? I'll be handling the copious of copium addicts. Don't bother waiting for me. Hey, what up boys? So after yesterday's god tier clickbait, I'm back to scraping the bottom of the barrel, struggling to fabricate topics for an MMO that doesn't even exist. However, before- So he often says that, right? Which is so true and so funny and I know his pain. Um, I want to I wanna point out something from another video recently where I talked, I think I talked about ISC on Salty Mike 2, where I said, I don't like the direction that they've gone, just talking about game development and not actually talking about the game. I got multiple comments saying, then you would have nothing to make videos on. And if you made your week in review video, it would be like two minutes long. And I stopped there and went, did you just read what you just wrote? Nothing is happening. You basically are saying that nothing happens in Star Citizen. There's nothing to update. There's nothing to do. And there's a reason why. And we'll get into it later in this react, I guess. Before we start rummaging through the pile of... Uh... Uh, I wanted to talk about the hype surrounding Ashes of Creation and why it's important to temper expectations and remain vigilant throughout this game's development process. Which is ironic, considering my whole existence revolves around peddling that Ashes of Creation copium. But I am not blind. Cautiously optimistic is probably the best way to describe my feelings, and I'm sure this is the same for most of you. Let's discuss this topic today and highlight why it's important to remain critical. But before we get into that, grab yourself a Coca-Cola because in today's video, we'll be contrasting Ashes of Creation with similar projects, highlighting the damage over hype does, and discussing why people are so desperate for this MMORPG to succeed. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? 
Uh, so I want to start today's go. video by contrasting the of creation with the project it is probably most compared to, Star Citizen. The memes are infinite. Bashes of cremation. I can't wait for my grandkids to play this. This is just Star Citizen, but with swords. <laughs> and that's fair. Bashes doesn't exactly have the cleanest track record and has made some pretty reputation damaging mistakes over the years of development. I personally write those off as a budding indie developer with a huge amount of pressure on their back, taking risks and trying new things to see what sticks. But sorry, that that's exactly what Star Citizen does as well. Um, just to be fair, is new developer taking risks, trying new things, and that's yeah. the thinking of a reasonable human being. We only want crippling depression and brutal skepticism around these parts. Despite the fact that my channel revolves around this game, I actively encourage skepticism and highlight important flaws and problems with the game that I probably does more harm than good. I do this because I want the game to succeed, and by ignoring problems or brushing bad press under the rug, it's setting the game up for failure down the line. You can say whatever you want about Ashes of Creation, but it's already significantly more legitimate than Star Citizen. Star Citizen started development in 2012, selling game packs for up to $15,000 hey, with a launch go. ETA of 2016. Since then, Scope Creep has completely engulfed the project and they continue to promise more and more, exploiting their whales with up to $35,000 packages nine years later. Here in 2022, Cloud Imperium games cannot even fit 50 players onto a server without it shitting a brick with network-based glitches. No, 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 Nark. No, 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 no. We fit 150 players in a server with the same network glitches. That's progress and clipping issues, with absolutely zero evidence that these issues will ever be fixed. Additionally, their public image is also extremely poorly received, blaming players for the issues of the game and making decisions that protect itself from criticism by hiding their roadmap from public eyes. The latest in their genius plans for monetary domination. Can't critic a game for lack of progress if you can't see the progress, am I right guys? Crypto bro levels of IQ, but then again, but the the company that you shill your videos for, and this is this is actually not like a shitting on Narc video. I actually love Narc, but the the Ashes of Creation guys make content once a month, right? Um, they don't do the amount of communication back and forth between their community the way Star Citizen does. So that's kind of like, um. Star Citizen essentially making narc videos every day because they don't have anything to talk about. And then Ashes of Creation going, you know what? Once a month, we'll update you on what we're working and you'll actually see progress. That's essentially what the roadmap, the old roadmap thing was. And the old way they did the roadmap was horrible. I agree, Fidario, or for, for Dio. Sorry, I'm, I always get his name wrong. And the... The idea that uh, this was like a bad change is essentially going from a horrible roadmap. And the, the if they didn't say roadmap watchers, if they didn't blame us, that would have been a nothing burger of a change. But whoever wrote that is an idiot. Sorry, you're an actually idiot. The game is all but appealing to crypto bros at this point, so easy money, I guess. Finally, there's the fact that the basic fundamental features, like NPC monsters, of which we don't have a single alien after nine years, with ship armor, professions, and basically 90% of the gameplay still not existing here in 2022. And it's this True. that I want to highlight. Ashes of Creation has shown incredible progress in 2022, revealing revolutionary technology that has never been seen before in an MMORPG and has shown incredible evidence of network feats that were previously thought impossible with next generation graphics. Oh, and by the way, that clip you just saw was during their Alpha 1 phase before they even moved over to Unreal Engine 5, reaping the benefits of that engine's optimization and networking upgrades. So, 
let that one sink in. Star Citizen yeah. is a disaster compared to Ashes of Creation, which has been in development for one third of the time, raised a hundred times less dollars, and yet has delivered on their promises at roughly the original ETAs. Huh? The, the not the original ETAs, but I think he's going to make a joke about that. The um, he's right. But he's also so wrong. And this is this is where I wanted to jump into it. He doesn't recognize the the core issue of Star Citizen. The core issue of Star Citizen is they're not developing Star Citizen. This entire time they haven't developed Star Citizen. Star Citizen is the front for the poker game in the back. And the poker game in the back is Squadron 42, the single player campaign. It's terrible. Okay, that is a bad thing to do. That is not a good thing, right? That is not a good thing. But when we give Star Citizen its problems and we talk badly about Star Citizen, I, I just want that people to know what the problem is and get to the core of the issue. Like, it's Star Citizen is definitely a scam in a way but the scam is different than what everybody thinks it is is the the over ambition and the scope creep the entire scope creep of the game is star citizen star citizen was the scope creep that's the problem is that the scope creep is being used to advertise what the actual kickstarter was meant to make that's the problem here, right? How can you expect a good project? How could you expect anything good if no, almost none of the company is working on that game, right? And that is that is something most Star Citizen backers knew going in, or I shouldn't say no knew going in. Almost no Star Citizen backers knew going in, but were quickly kind of smacked in the face with of oh shit this is how it's going to be um and it's only gotten worse over time and that's the only thing narc didn't like is implying star citizens a complete disaster because they're just taking your money and pocketing it they're not doing anything with it they're doing something with it but frustratingly it's just not the thing we want them to do with it and that's like the the thing that i just want to bang my head against the wall as a star citizen backer and definitely as a content creator is that there's just nothing going into our game and and then now it's the oh yeah we're gonna put your your stuff in star citizen or in squadron 42 and then we're gonna bring it over to star citizen well I don't know how long ago that announcement was, but uh, I have yet to see any of the results. So let's continue with the video. But that is like the core thing that I think NARC is um, doing wrong when when um, being critical about Star Citizen. Obviously, Star Citizen deserves all the criticism in the world. It is definitely scammy, um, but I don't think it is a scam because I feel like when you actually have the company working on it, maybe we would see some progress and the idea of like the technical hurdles that star citizen has made versus the technical hurdles, uh, that ashes have made. Obviously there's that whole scale thing that star citizen is like always touting. I'm more interested in ashes these days than I am in star citizen because, um, yeah, I think he'll kind of go into the those things here. The original 2018 release date. <laughs> Say that again. I dare you. <laughs> I don't think it's fair to compare the two at all. Intrepid are developing at a much faster and more successful pace than any of the other Kickstarter MMOs, and their marketing practices are far less predatory than Star Citizen's literal NFT level ships, Pantheon's $750 pre-alpha keys, and all of our currently popular MMOs that are rife with various degrees of pay to win. All things considered, I actually think, if anything, Ashes of Creation gets given too much 
shit and negativity from the MMORPG community. It's from like what I could so tell, jaded, yeah, it does they seem refuse that way. to let another game convince them of success. Or maybe they're scared Ashes of Creation is going to ruin their currently favorite MMO, but I digress. I think holding Steven and Intrepid accountable is a good thing. At least we can look you at You can ride a snail that grows legs and turns into a horse. Ashes of Creation's development and see that they can actually deliver a decent MMO. The seasonal tech, the character creator, the combat, it's all very promising, quite unlike Star Citizen, Camelot Unchained, Crowfall, and all... See, like, that's another part where it's like, bruh. You mentioned seasonal tech as, like, one of the main things that's, like, a big deal. It's cool, but you're, I don't know how much you're going to care about something like that while playing the game. I know it might have like factors on what is, what materials are there. I kind of know that that's very a uh, star citizen like comment to make. And until you see the game actually changing with the seasons and things like that, then you can get excited about those things. Trust me as a star citizen backer, but the, um, the, the promise of star citizen is still very, very strong, very strong when you jump in and just go like, whoa, this shit's wild, right? Those other Kickstarter MMOs. But does that really justify it being called the savior of the MMORPG genre? Well, that's an interesting question. So I think we'll discuss this next. I, I don't remember. Again, I kind of pre-watched, but I didn't watch past this. What, Where I get that this could be the savior is that this dude, uh, like the game's already paid for, it's going to have a sub model, and they're not doing like pay to win, right? Is like this guy is a fan of the old school MMOs that everybody wants to play again. So he's making one not get it twisted. Ashes of Creation doesn't need to but... be the savior of MMORPGs. It just needs to be a fun, open-world PvP MMO and not compromise its progression with pay-to-win, of which Steven has assured us it won't because the whole reason he started his crusade in the first place was because Arc Age, Steven's favorite MMO, destroyed itself with pay-to-win. Why would God, he want his game was own supposed game to be, so to be destroyed good. in the same way? For infamy? For money? Well, considering Steven's down 30 million since Alpha 1, I'm pretty sure he's not looking to grab a quick buck with a rug pull. Ain't nobody going around claiming this upcoming indie MMO is going to be the MMO that saves the genre. Well, at least not within my niche community, because when they do, they... But there's absolutely nothing wrong with Dipshit having detective. a little copium, getting excited for a game that seems to be doing all the right things for once. I mean, my whole brand depends on people huffing that copium, and for every like that this video gets, I'll be distributing a free canister for all the lovely boys in the Discord. And that includes all new members joining today as well. <laughs> This genre has been in a dire state for a long ass time now, with only disappointments coming and going faster than your average raid tier in WoW. It's not like Ashes of Creation is perfect. A uh, quick reminder in case you forgot, Ashes of Creation doesn't even exist. But yeah. what else is there to get hyped for? I can't think of a single other Western MMO that I'm excited about. Riot's MMO is going to be another corporate shit show with linear theme park gameplay made by one of the most infamous MMORPG devs there ever was. Yeah. Riot I don't think so. Like, Riot's MMO seems like it's going to be really, really strong. Um, simply because they have, uh, like, a, a big thing about MMOs is, um, uh, I guess, like, investment in the world and investment in the, uh, the world building, the lore, things like that. And you have such a universe with, uh, like league league and, um, what was the, the Netflix show and stuff. So they kind of have that, like you're already kind of, um, invest invested a little bit in that, that world building. I think that's a pretty big deal. I said the fallen is, uh, 
Uh, yeah, and all the Asian MMOs are basically just gambling simulators hidden behind giant anime titties. Ashes is an ambitious, True. fully funded game made by someone who understands MMOs and his team is growing at an alarming rate. As of August 2022, I think they've just passed 130 employees and still hiring left, right and centre. I get the feeling we've not even begun to see the true pace Intrepid can churn out content and 2022 still I've heard that shit before. <laughs> oh man, I've heard As that before. Four more opportunities to blow our mind, and I'm confident they plan Not even to do 700 exactly employees? that. In a perfect world, none of Building this would be new considered studios, special. But at 300, 400 in more. This MMO drought, people are getting desperate. Losers. The reason fanatics 10k deep into this project call it the savior of MMORPGs is because we have seen solid evidence. Whoa, 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 wait, so you can get 10k deep into this game. How are you, how, I did, what? How are you making fun of Star Citizen for offering 10k packages and then you could get 10k deep into this game? I guess it's the pay to win and he's about to say that he has solid evidence of things. But the thing is, is they do. That's the difference. I don't think it's calling the 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 kettle black because in Star Citizen, guys, don't forget, it's fucking pay to win. And you could buy spaceships that give you advantages over other people, or at least the idea that you have an advantage of other of other people. It gives it gives you spaceships that gives you the ability that unlocks um certain types of gameplay, things like that, that otherwise you would have to grind for to get in game. Here you have large uh alpha keys which is they're very expensive but then after that it's only cosmetics and the crazy thing is is how i understand the cosmetics work is the cosmetics that you buy on the site for ashes they're like one single suit kind of and if you're going to make a cool looking character you're going to want to combine armors and those armors are only going to be in the game so you can go 10k in deep in this game I don't think he addressed what's bad about going 10k deep in Star Citizen. Right? Uh, I put a new player in a Vanguard and then and, a, and then Star Cruiser in Aurora who wins. Star Cruiser. That doesn't make my point. Put a new player in, in an Aurora and then take another one and put them in a Prospector. You can't mine in the Aurora. Take a take a new player, put them in a Carrick, and put the new put another put a really good player in an Aurora. They can't do exploration. That's the kind of point that I'm making. More than anything. In this MMO drought, people are getting desperate. The reason Obviously, fanatics skills 10k deep into this project call it the Star savior Citizen. of MMORPGs is because we have seen solid evidence of absolutely right, I'm not insane arguing with you, development. But is what we've seen really enough to justify the title of savior of MMORPGs? Well, as someone who is neck deep in the copium for this highly ambitious MMORPG, we've not even seen some of the best systems come to light yet. And I think it's this that makes a lot of the players in the know super excited. So why does Ashes of Creation get so much hype, but at the same time, so much criticism? There's many hypocritical accusations being thrown its way according to the general player base. Things like utilizing fear of missing out tactics, or things like us paying them a ludicrous amount of money to test their game. But the one that sticks out to me the most is that See, the like game that. is- I like the really expensive key, because it's like, you're really only paying to play now if you really, really, really want to. Where Star Citizen has the, the low barrier to entry, and then it's just like you're another head in the, in the pool of people that are testing the game. It's nothing but empty promises until it finally releases. Except, it's not empty promises. 
Even in its alpha phase, Ash has showed that their networking and optimization is far above games like New World, not that that's much of a compliment. And by refusing to acknowledge this, you're just being disingenuous. Yeah, One of the major problems with, with Kickstarter projects like Star Citizen, Chronicles of Valeria, Crowfall, and all them other garbage scams is scope creep. Something Ashes has kept in check from day one. Out of all the things they've shown, to me, the most tangible part of this project is their lack of scope creep. They set their development goals during Kickstarter, smashed them all, setting records within a few days, but despite the insane amount of interest, they didn't add any additional features. They didn't keep adding to it. They said, these are our stretch goals. This is our, the key thing here is this is our game. I'm not high on the copium for for uh, for ashes, but if I was going to take one thing of criticism from Star Citizen, at the very least, post I don't know maybe 2019, I would say you have to lay out what you're even building. You got to tell, you got to show people what you're building. With this game, you know exactly what they're working towards. So when you see them make progress, you know what it's going to. You know what it's going to turn into being. So when they make progress on the seasons, you know that that might be something to do with the node system, right? But for us, we, we just have been not seeing progress. And then they go, well... PES is the new network thing. And by the way, it's coming at the end of June, but it's mid-August and we still don't have it. Even though they probably could have comfortably done that, they aren't just winging it and adding new potential content all the time. It's always yeah, been about the same normal games core just cut gameplay features. features. I think the general players can, just nobody knows don't they were understand there. that MMO development takes a long ass time. Like seriously, guys, what do you want? Another unfinished corporate shit show that dies within a month just so you can get your monkey brain MMO fix? Or kind do you of. want an MMO I want that's my made new monkey brain passion, MMO. time and care, but most importantly, that it actually works? I'm at the point where I don't trust AAA companies to make MMOs because they just make them single player RPGs with co-op and most likely the same garbage mechanics from the last two decades. This is exactly what I predict we'll see for Riot's MMO. That's not an MMO to me. The massively multiplayer online But they haven't explained Riot's MMO. Like, that's like my main criticism of him in this video. They haven't said really anything about Riot's MMO, have they? ...has been tainted by this weird single player obsession with finite content that must be completed as fast as possible. There's no compelling social gameplay, no enjoyable repeatable content that keeps me interested, but above everything else, Satisfying progression no longer exists in our currently popular MMOs because satisfying progression costs time. When you rush through a game to burn through the content as fast as possible, that's not satisfying. <laughs> that's not meaningful. That's garbage. It's it all about participation rewards nowadays and, and then cheap it dies. dopamine hits in the form of exploitative gambling simulators. And then people wonder why they don't enjoy MMOs anymore. This is the opposite of what Ashes of Creation is trying to do. Within the very core design, they are trying to bring back that old school feeling of social gameplay and progression. But that doesn't mean they will succeed. Their development progress recently has been impressive, and I'm sure there's some more exciting live streams to come. However, cautiously optimistic is a healthy place to be going forward. And uh, for the love of God, if you feel compelled to purchase an Alpha 2 key, at least wait until we see it first. They're no. not going to stop selling them after the Alpha 2 launches, and you're just taking an unnecessary risk for the sake of some cosmetics that you probably won't even use. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate yes, for a good MMO, and my opinions mean nothing without yours in the comments below. And hey, we're closing in on 30,000 subs extremely quickly, but I really want to push for it before this month's live stream as I have something quite big planned. So please, I know most of you are already subscribed because I have an abnormally high subscriber view count, but just double check and I'll catch you again in 
tomorrow's video. But Nog, this MMO's gonna be a disaster. Riot's MMO is gonna be the true saviour. And to that I say, listen kid, if you think another corporate-focused MMO with LFG systems and a toxic community is gonna magically save the genre, then... Ghostcrawler called, he wants you to take your tongue out of his ass because you're oh, hard shit. on copium. God damn. Okay. God damn, Narc. But, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I think that the comparison is only not fair because of the lack of understanding about how Squadron 42 plays into it. But the, uh, the, the key theme of his video, I think, is really powerful, and it's about the scope creep, but less about the scope creep for me, and less of, and more of a, of a inability to understand what Star Citizen even is, and what it's going to be, right? And that's where I, I have my issues with Star Citizen, is it would be really, really great if they made progress towards features that I actually knew existed uh and and that we knew how that they would play out and what the design of the overall game is with ashes of creation you have a complete understanding of what the overall uh core systems would be in the game you understand the node system you understand um you know just generally like leveling characters classes things like that you know everything going into it you know what you're putting your money into and as things progress you know what they're progressing towards cig likes the idea of not telling you anything because it's really easy to tell to just shift the narrative when there is not there's nothing to narrate there's no pictures on the page you don't know what you're getting into and that's all i got with this one it, it's uh watching these things and, and watching another game that has similar comparisons to star citizen just be that much better uh really scares me for for star citizen's future and kind of the way they've been doing things but i always kind of keep in the back of my mind the idea that well it feels frustrating it feels bad and it sucks because well nobody's even working on it they're just dropping little uh bits of crumbles of you know trail of, of food to just keep you kind of feeling like there's progress feeling like there's something to do while we just wait for whatever their network tech is going to be to make this game actually work and i don't know what's it going to be called next week <laughs>